All right, we're here today with the famous Dr. Robert O. Young, worldwide nutritionist and healer, microbiologist. My name is Ronnie Ruiz, and I'm really excited today that we're, we're going to have the opportunity to ask Dr. Young all the questions that your worldwide following would love to ask you, but they don't have access to you. Okay. So the first question I want to ask you today is, what is the difference between scientific studies and empirical evidence? Well, that's an excellent uh, question, Ronnie, but there's, there's not a, uh, a lot of difference in the sense of uh, most of them are subjective, uh, depending on the researcher and how they're viewing the empirical evidence or the scientific evidence and how they're interpreting that ev evidence. Uh, it's only as good as the researcher. So uh, any research that we look at, we have to look at it uh, very objectively, uh, even though it's subjective to the researcher's interpretation. Uh, so when I'm doing research, I may come to a conclusion based on a bias as it pertains to the acid-alkaline balance theory, uh, where another researcher may not even consider that particular component of their research, and therefore ignoring that to maybe citing more on you know something that deals specifically with the tissues and why you know let's say the epigenetics or the DNA is altering uh, where I'm looking at uh, the environment as a condition of let's say subjective changes to the DNA or how the genetics responds to the environment so it's all about perspective and, and we have to be open to that uh, and also to the biases of the researcher. So would it be fair to say that a lot of the scientific studies out there are biased and that they won't get empirical evidence when they're put to the, put to, put to the use of the people actually? Well, a lot of the research isn't being done on humans. So uh, all of my research is, is human based. I don't do any animal studies. And so we're looking at the results of uh, changes at the cellular level to the blood. Uh, we're testing the interstitial pH of the fluids, both whether uh, we're in a state of um, uh, interstitial alkalosis or uh, acidosis. And these are things that are currently considered by uh, a lot of researchers. And most of these are, are of course, done on animals or uh, done in uh, vitro rather than vivo. Uh, so I'm looking at probably the only scientist in the world that's looking at lifestyle and diet and how it impacts the health and the quality of the blood, which makes my research, I think, significantly valuable. Even though it's subjective, my conclusions, uh, I think, need to be considered as an environmental approach to what's happening in the human body to specific organs and tissues. Um, you know, just recently there was a published article in the New England Journal of Medicine by the editor who even suggested within his own writing that 50% of the research that's being done is inaccurate. It's, it's, it's not even viable. Uh, the problem is, is what 50% is he actually talking about? Uh, you know, so we have to look at research with a, with a very, very open mind, including my own. Uh, and, of course, you know, I've been basing my work going forward uh, with empirical evidence is, is what is changing. You know, are we, are we having success in reversing a specific condition and what are the elements that we see in those particular changes? So if we're dealing with a condition like cancer, what are the changes that are taking place at the cellular level? You know, are we seeing improvements in the blood? Are we seeing improvements in the immune system? Uh, are we seeing anatomical, physiological, even functionality changes? And these are the things that I'm interested in, and these are the things that I'm writing about. I, someone recently made a comment to me that they don't want to hear any more urban legends as, as far as referring to people's empirical evidence they're experiencing with programs and protocols and things like that. And I thought that was and this is a, a medical person, and I thought it was a very profound statement because that's how the scientific world thinks. I mean, they, they don't, they put down the empirical evidence and just focus on that scientific study, and they're losing, they're losing a huge chunk of what you've gained over the years, and, and basically you're able to see the feedback with the human being. It's either working or it's not, right? Yeah, I mean, how can you argue with results? 
Uh, and we're not talking about results that is taking place in the test tube uh, or, or a line of cancer cells that we're testing some form of chemical on but, uh, and see how those cells respond. But we are actually looking at how food, what we eat, what we drink, how we think, you know, what type of exercise uh, and how that impacts the most important organ of the body and that's the blood. So yes, we're noting uh, the changes but we're doing it scientifically. So if I'm monitoring an inflammatory uh, condition, uh, I'm going to monitor, uh, you know, inflammatory markers to see if those are actually changing. And there are certain inflammatory markers that show up in the blood uh, that can be man managed uh, or, or, or viewed. Uh, so the same thing with white count or red blood counts or uh, sodium levels or potassium levels. But the thing that we're doing that's unique is that I'm monitoring the chemistry, not of just the blood, but the chemistry of the interstitial fluids. And the interstitial fluids is approximately 18 to 21 liters, where the fluids of the blood are around 3 to 5 liters. So we're looking at a significant amount of fluids, and those interstitial fluids are the fluids that surround the cell. So this is where we're going to find really the information that we're looking at. If there's a deficiency in potassium, if there's a deficiency in sodium, we're not going to see that in the blood. We're going to see that in the interstitial fluids. But this is something that's not currently being tested or viewed by uh, medical science at this time. Uh, so we're right, right at the forefront of this research. And, and, and it's interesting, we can find normal, let's say, calcium levels in the blood, and yet the person in the interstitial fluids is in, is in hypercalcemia, meaning that the body is pulling calcium from the bones or, other, or from the diet, from the bones or sources in order to manage, you know, the delicate pH balance of the interstitial fluids, which is around 7.35 to 7.4. Uh, so we find when someone is in an inflammatory condition, they'll be in metabolic alkalosis. When someone's in a degenerative condition, they'll be in uh, decompensated acidosis or what I call latent tissue acidosis where the pH is below that going into a, a 7.2 even down to a 6.8. If this happens in the blood, of course, you would be dead because at 7.0 and lower, you go into a coma. But this doesn't, because there's such a fine line on pH in the blood, these are not perceived by current researchers because they're not testing where the show is going on. And the show is not going on in the blood, it's actually going on in the interstitial fluids of the body that surround all the cells. So there's cases that you've run into where the science doesn't agree with the empirical evidence. Exactly. Exactly right. Uh, so and I, I, have and look, you... I have to look at both. How do you turn the minds around of the scientists when they have their science, but you're seeing empirical evidence that disagrees? Well, you have to publish, and so that's why I'm excited to, to have this, uh, this opportunity to be one of the, uh, the editors on a published uh, peer-reviewed journal, the International Journal of uh, Complementary and Alternative Medicine. Uh, and so not only am I reviewing research from other doctors, but I'm now submitting my own research uh, for publication, which before it was like, thank you very much, we're not publishing on this particular subject at this time. They were reluctant to publish because the work that I'm doing is so revolutionary in relationship to what is currently being done and what's being viewed. Uh, so. Uh, this is this is my work and has been my work for now going on 35 years.